You know, the way I like to kind of discuss them are from the, um, the features that are the most common to the features that are a little less common and a little more exotic. And so the most common kind of respiratory manifestation of Marfan syndrome involves a chest wall. And most patients with Marfan syndrome are very familiar with kind of the chest wall abnormalities, which include like pectus abnormalities, pectus escavatum, where you have the sunken in chest, or carinatum, where the chest actually is very prominent, and scoliosis, which is curvature of the spine. And lastly, you can have a respiratory muscle kind of dysfunction, a respiratory muscle weakness. And that's because the skeletal muscles in patients with Marfan syndrome are decidedly weaker than the skeletal muscles in patients who don't have the syndrome. And so the respiratory muscle weakness and some of these chest wall abnormalities serve to reduce the respiratory capacity of the lungs. And so what happens is what we call a restrictive defect. And so the chest is largely restricted in that you can't take as deep a breath as you need in order to bring in the oxygen, but also to get rid of carbon dioxide, which the body normally makes. Yeah, well, one of the things that I notice, um, and you know, I focus on with parents especially, is an awareness of when kind of an abnormality develops in the context of kind of a, a child's normal developmental life. Now, those of us who are lung specialists, we think about the lung as forming um, um, from um, before birth up until about the age of five or six years of age. And so any type of disturbance in the thoracic cage or what we call the chest cage will actually translate into abnormal formation of the lung. And so any child with Morphin syndrome who has scoliosis or a pectus abnormality before that time is actually definitely going to have some sequela in terms of lung function.